As wise man Christopher moved to the overflow congregation at the Synagogue Church of All Nations, the power of God was present to heal, deliver, and bless them. Prayerfully touching her in the name of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost uncovered the darkness lurking within this woman's life, and the supernatural power of God began to crush every demonic stronghold in her life. Let's watch and see her deliverance. All over your body. Now speak out. Who are you? She's my wife and you know it. C'est ma femme, et tu le sais. Why are you trying to break a home, huh? Why? Are you trying to separate me with my wife? Are when I married her, you are not there. You never made vows. Who are you to come between two married people? How many of you are living here? We are five. Something. Mention your names. Frustration. Unemployment. Death. Who is the last person? She's a deceiver. Who made her to be deceiving? Me. She's my wife. How does she deceive? She's a schemer. She cheats okay. on me and she covers her track. And now I'm dealing with her and in a matter of time, she's dying. Her life is in my hands and nobody, either you or whoever, will take her away from me. What is your position in the place you're living? I'm destroying lives. You destroy lives? Yes. How do you go about destroying lives? How? Accidents. I break homes. How do you break homes? I hook her up mm -hmm. with married men. You hook her up? Yes. With married men? Yes. All married men like her. All and you know it. <laughs> all married men do what? <laughs> How does she capture the married men? She has a beautiful eyes. The Bedroom the eyes. eyes. What do you mean by that? Can she see? How Look does she? Look at her. Uh -huh. Yes. This is what I'm talking about. What is in her eyes? Power. What kind of power? That attracts men. Okay, let's talk men to men. Leave my wife alone and I'll leave you alone. How does she use the power in her eyes? It attracts men. Use, okay? it, use it the way you use it to attract men. Can you see? Oh, can you see? Oh, can you see? Oh, can you see? Can you see? Oh, no. Did you drag me? So when they look at her eyes, what happens to them? You know, you start falling for her and hate your own wife. See her as an ugly beast. They will hate their own wives. Yes! And they will come after this lady. Yes. Is that what you Because mean? she betrayed me and I've been punishing her and she doesn't get it. That is why I take her to the bus clubs and at the end I beat her up. She's always bruised as you can see. I make her drunk and I beat her. I sleep with her and when her baby father comes, he finds disaster and I like it when they fight. <laughs> And you know what? Her future is in my hands. She will never get employment. And even her, that, that stupid hair salon she just opened, she will never find business. She's always running at a loss forever until the 10th of July when she leaves this world. She's died on the 10th of July. Do you know that? Why? Last year, she just skimmed from me after I caused that fatal accident. She survived by the slim chance. By this time around, I won't let her escape. I'm taking her to the dark side. How do you want to go about that on the 10th of July? Every year, July, no, I cause work. accidents so that she dies. We drink her blood for powers, me and my friends. You say that you capture men with a power in your eyes. Yes. How many of them do you normally capture in a day? Uh, in a day, it just, uh, you know, it just depends. But every single day, men falls for her, no matter what. Where do they normally take her to? You know what? It just depends. But what I know is they will keep following her, calling her, leaving messages in the sent her terms, and they will fight with their wife at the end of the day. Answer me. How many... Men, do you capture in a day with the power in your eyes? 
Just depends, but mostly in the clubs. So you made her to be going to the clubs. She goes, can you see? Que vendeur des clubs. She smokes, she drinks, she can dance. I didn't know that she was coming here. I don't know how it happened. All the way from Botswana to Nigeria. What is in the Synagogue Church of All Nations that she you hate? She came here because she wanted Botswana. to see TV Joshua. She thinks he is the end of her problems. What is in Prophet TV Joshua that is against you? We are living in two different worlds. In the light, and we live in the dark. What do you do to those married men, their marriages, to their wives? Hurting them makes me feel much better. They fall for her, they don't love their wives anymore. They want divorce and marry her because she's a queen. How many have divorced as a result of you? <laughs> Two, three, you know, but others are still fighting as she speaks. So leave my wife alone. I want to go before I fight you. Man to man. I've been patient with you, so now take your thing. Okay? Because she thinks she's slim, but I'm cleverer than her. So right now your end has come. Fly in the name of Jesus Christ. Out! We want to deliver us one place. We want to deliver us one place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Elle a reçu sa délivrance. How are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you? What happened to you? Nothing. You are delivered. Follow Thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for delivering. Thank you, Jesus. My name is Victoria and I'm from Botswana. You're very welcome. And can you first of all tell us what was the problems that brought you to the Synagogue Church of All Nations? Spiritual has been an excessive drinking and smoking. Okay. Now, we want to go from the very beginning. How, how did this problem start in your life? At what age did you begin to have these experiences? Well, it started when I was a young girl, when I was in grade four, when men would visit me at night and sleep with me. That was in your dreams? Years. Okay, so as you now grew older, what did this evil spirit now begin to push you to do in terms of your lifestyle? Um, they pushed me to do uh, bad things such as uh, sleeping around with married men, having a lasting relationship with them and breaking their homes. Um, we'll go out to a nightclub where they'll buy me uh, plenty of drinks, uh, buy me clothes, give me money for me to sleep with them. And at the end of the day, they go home, back home to our places, and then I would just collect money from them and then go where I have to be. So you would meet these married men in clubs, and they would then begin to buy you things, and what would happen in, in your relationship with them? Well, um, the only relationship that I had with them, which was just for, to mingle around, or during their spare time, they would call me whenever they are free from their homes or uh, try and excuse themselves to come see me and uh, sometimes I would be able to see them as they would be busy doing some other household duties. And what would happen to these men in terms of their relationships with their wives? Once they got in contact with you, began a relationship with you, what would happen to them with their wives? Well, they'll fight, they'll quarrel to the extent that the women will start calling me, insulting me and I'll do the same. But at the end of the day, the men will protect me. So the men you met would begin to love you even more than their wives? Yes, sir. They will actually start falling for me instead of their wives. Whenever they are away from me, they will start calling me, begging for a spare time. And what are the things that you would be collecting from these married men? What would be the things you'd be taking from them? I'll be collecting money. I'll be collecting clothes and other gifts. Okay. And aside from the issue of going around sleeping with married men, what other things did this spirit push you to do in the area of men, how you would break men, uh, men's homes and hearts? 
Well, I was a heartbreaker because uh, I would date someone my age, but then when they're ready to settle, I won't settle for that because I'll tell them that I won't settle for less. And then uh, even if somebody cries out loud or go to my family for the consolation, I won't even listen to them. I'll just tell them that I made up my mind and I've got nothing to do with them. And that's the way it is. How did you feel each time you broke a man's heart? Well, every time they cry or every time they say it, I would just laugh. It made me really happy that I was a diva. So I think we can understand what our sister is saying. That evil spirit really had pushed her to do so many things, and especially in the area of relationships with men. It pushed her to be breaking the hearts of men she went out with. And she said that that spirit actually made her happy anytime she saw these men cry because there was a spiritual husband that was pushing her to do such things. And sister, can you explain to us, apart from these experiences and encounters with men, what other areas did this evil spirit push you into in terms of your lifestyle? You mentioned earlier that you were drinking excessively. Can you just explain a little bit more about your lifestyle at that time? Well, it destroyed me to the extent that I was always disappointed and I felt so betrayed. Whatever that I do, wherever I go, I feel so disappointed and start hating myself. To the, fact, to the extent that I wouldn't even go to work, I have a, I'm running my own business. I would call my employees and tell them that, you know what, guys, I'm not feeling well, so feel my job for me and do the rest, and I'll see you in the evening. Sometimes I don't even go there. I just tell them that my son is not well, and I'll just lazy around and lose a lot of money. Okay, and tell us, would you be going out to clubs? Tell us, when you go out to clubs, what are the kind of things you would be drinking and the things that would be happening there? Well, I'll start drinking early, about uh, around 9 a.m., almost every day. And I'll smoke, and I'll end up going to the clubs around 12 midnight, where I'll drink uh, whiskeys, tequila, Savannah Dry. I'll just uh, drink up to 24 bottles a day or a night. You mean and then I'll go back home before I even know it. I'll just wake up home with my bag on, sometimes my shoes. I would ask myself, oh my God, how did I end up home? Because the last time I saw myself, I was dancing in a nightclub. So you would drink to the point where you would lose consciousness, and then from a nightclub, you would just find yourself back in your house? Yeah, I found myself bruised at home. They would say, I would ask them, how did I get here? I asked my fiance, how did I get here? Sometimes he would be sleepy, and I'll be out there drinking with my friends. And then I'll ask him, how did I get it? Did you go and pick me up at the club? And then he was saying, no, your friends came here and you, were, you passed out. Actually, I'm the one who held them to take you out of the car to our bed. Sometimes he would find messages and then he would start hitting me and I wouldn't even fight for myself because I'll be under the influence of drugs and I wouldn't even know what was really going on. Okay, so we just want to understand how much alcohol were you taking on a daily basis? Just give us an idea of how much. Well, I, uh, in a daily basis, like I was saying, I'll take 24 bottles of Savannah Dry, even one bottle of Jameson whiskey, and uh, on top of that, I'll take shots of tequilas or Springbok. So we can understand how severe our sister's alcohol addiction became as a result of this evil spirit that was pushing her into such a lifestyle. And you mentioned that in the midst of this, you're also smoking. Is that right? Yeah, whenever I started drinking, when, I was, when I'm not drinking, I wouldn't smoke. But when I start drinking, I would start smoking. Even when my fiancé said, Victoria, I don't want smoke, I would say, I'm going to smoke, no matter what, I'll come arrogant and stiffy like, and then I'll go to the ladies and start smoking, or I'll swipe out the packet of uh, pita or CA, then I'll start smoking it on my own. And then he will tell me, Victoria, you've been smoking. I would say, yes, I've been smoking. These are my lungs. I didn't see any problem with it. But in the, the following day, I won't be feeling well. I'll be feeling weak. But then same things continue. I go to work because where my shop is, there's a bar. When I get there, I send them to the, to the bar to get me at least a black label. There's a quart of black label. Then I'll start drinking it. Then after some few minutes, I go outside, I start smoking. Okay, now we just want to understand as well, in the midst of all of these experiences, excessive drinking, smoking, um, going out with various men, enjoying breaking their hearts, once again, what kind of dreams were you having during this period? I would watch soapy such as Isidingo, and the male characters would appear to me at night, 
and start sleeping with me. Um, my, my, the, my spiritual husband will visit me uh, through the people that I like, through the models, the actors, the seniors, and so forth. To think that sometimes or when I even wake up, I find myself wet to, to just to be shown that, you know what, I've been used. It wasn't a dream, but it was real. I could see that this was not a dream. So I hope we understand what our sister is saying. She said that she would watch programs on television, especially soap operas or films, and the spiritual husband would take the form of a character in those television programs and appear to her in her dream and sleep with her. And physically, the following morning, she would find out that she had released that she was wet. And all of this was a result of this spiritual husband that was inside of you right from a young age. Is that right? True that. Now, we want to tell us, uh, understand from you, Adam, how did you actually find out about Emmanuel TV and your journey to the Synagogue Church of All Nations? My aunties always told, told me about Emmanuel TV and the man of God himself. And I didn't believe in that. I was say, ah, that is magic. So one day I was, uh, after a hectic night of dancing, drinking, I was just lazing around my sitting room. I was sleeping uh, in a couch. So I was playing around with my remote control, and then I came across uh, Love Oral Channel. Then I went like, oh my God, if there's this channel, it, there must be Emmanuel TV. So and then I scrolled and I scrolled until I found Emmanuel Channel. Then I was, and then I was, and then I was, I went like, oh my God, the spiritual has been, what is happening to me? Because of what I saw people confess, I was like, this is not me. This is not me, because right now I'm struggling to find jobs. My business is not doing well. And then I call my friend and then I ask her, where is this Emmanuel TV? She said, Lagos. I said, where is Lagos? She said, Nigeria. That was this year, February. That is when I went to see my auntie who once visited uh, Scorn. And then she helped me fill the papers. And then I ended up here last week, Wednesday. Well, when I came here, I was uh, just seated there. And the worst men started ministering in the, in the church. And they were like going touching our foreheads and stuff. But when uh, wise man Christopher came, he realized that there was a giant inside of me because he said, speak out, you demon, who are you? He could see that there was a giant who was actually using my eyes in any form of power. So then I tried to keep quiet, but he started provoking it. Uh, it was arrested, the demon was arrested, I went to sleep with it like that on Saturday night, but on Sunday, it, I was delivered here. Well, glory be to God Almighty, and we can actually see on the screen here when our sister came, and you can see how that evil spirit was manifesting, saying so many things. Tell us, sister, for the benefit of those waiting for deliverance today, what, what was your experience as the wise man prayed for you? How did you feel in your body? Just explain more. Well, I've been prayed for before. I attended so many churches back home. So when he touched me, I was like, oh, what is he doing? I didn't realize that I'm go I was going to receive fire. When he said the name of Jesus, I saw a lot sort of stars. That is the next thing I woke up from the floor. I didn't know really what happened. But then afterwards, I felt so light. And I was happy all over. I felt like I could shout to the whole world that, oh, in finally, for all these years, I've been suffering. And finally, I was freed. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. And to the glory of God, sister, tell us ever since your deliverance, tell us the changes that Jesus has brought into your life since your deliverance. Well, ever since my life, as you can see me smiling, I sleep like a baby. Indeed, I was, I'm a newborn. I sleep like a new baby and I'm so light. I don't have problems. At first, I, I had this uh, bad temper that even if I receive a text message, I would just get angry that I can crush somebody or ground him. But nowadays, even when somebody calls me with a, with a negative thoughts or whatever, I, I just take it as it is. One of my friends back home called me say, oh, well, we saw you on TV, what, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, oh, God bless you. Next time it will be you. So now I'm freed, I'm light, and I feel like really a newborn. Hallelujah. This is the evidence of deliverance, and I believe it's the same deliverance many of us are waiting for today. And our sister's testimony is a great inspiration to us. And sister, you said before coming here, you were addicted to alcohol to the point where you could take over 24 bottles of hard liquor every day. Since your deliverance, what can you say about alcohol and any desire or anything you have for it? Believe me, you... From uh, when I get back home, I don't think I will touch alcohol. Just in my dream the day before last night, I had a dream where a sort of a fairground and where so many people, 
there were uh, actually games. And then I came across a plastic bag with two cans of beer and one bottle of water. I picked it and then I opened it. I find that two, there were, there were, it, was, it contained two uh, cans of alcohol and a bottle of water. I went all around that fairground until I find the owner of the plastic and then I gave him the beers and I took out the water in my dream. And indeed, I've been delivered. I'll never go back to drinking, smoking or cheating. Glory be to God. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Now, sister, earlier on, you mentioned that when the wise man Christopher prayed for you, he identified that there was some power in your eyes. Could you just explain, before your deliverance, what can you say about your eyes and the strange power you realized you had in your eyes? Well, it started when I was uh, doing grade seven. A certain man came to me and then he said to me, wow, I love your eyes. He was saying, I, 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 I felt in love with your eyes. And then I realized, okay, thanks. But when I started growing up, every man, everywhere I go, they will fall for my eyes, especially in the nightclubs. Whenever I'm drinking by the counter, they'll come propose and start talking about my eyes, that of which I didn't even know that they possessed uh, those uh, evil spirit power. Every man fell for my eyes, even my fiancé. You know, that's how the devil really hooked me up. What is your word of encouragement and advice to viewers around the world right now, especially those who are in the same problem you were once in, addicted to alcohol, smoking, cheating around with many boyfriends and men. What is your advice to them now that you are delivered? I would advise them to come to Jesus, that Jesus is alive. He lives. He never said goodbye. And it's never too late to repent. The doors of the house of the Lord are always open 24-7. Just give up your faith to the Lord and give him all your heart, your mind, your strength. In everything that you do, praise him each moment you live. Amen. One more time, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. The evidence of Jesus' lives changed as we can see.